It's hurricane season. That's right. August and September are known for the biggest hurricanes to hit the nation. It's the perfect time for you as a newbie or maybe even experienced adjusters to get out there and get work and make money. But why are people saying don't take the assignment? That coming up next. But first, tales from the field. <laughs> We do have a tropical storm that is headed to New England and if you're interested in working stay tuned because in today's video I'm going to talk about companies that are hiring for that deployment or to work that storm. I'm going to tell you what keywords to look for in your job search. I'm also going to answer questions from you viewers that are posted in the comments. If you would like an answer to a hard press question that you have, drop it in the comments below. I try to answer every question in the first 24 hours after a video release. So keep that in mind. I'm going to go over how to stay working once you're deployed, how to make a good, I'm going to give you tips on how to make a good impression so that you stay deployed longer than anybody else. I'm also going to go over how to get deployed. That's right. How to even work this upcoming hurricane so you can stay around longer. But I want to say thank you to all my many subscribers and I have a free gift for you. This mouse pad right here gives you all the Xactimate clues and tips and tricks so that you work faster because one of the tips is having a sense of urgency. So we'll talk about that more in a bit. Go to this link in the description and get this free mouse pad that'll help you do great on your deployment. Okay, again, thank you to my very recent subscribers. You guys have helped me reach a huge goal of making it to five figures for my subscribers. If I'm not quite there yet, go ahead, hit that like and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification button so that you're the first to get your question answered. Okay, now let's talk about how to get deployed. Now, many of you want to know how to get started in this industry, so I do have some good news for you. Number one, what you're going to need to do to get deployed is you're going to have to have an extreme amount of flexibility. That's right. If you are tied to a job right now that may not let you leave for two weeks, two months, or even longer, well, you may not have the right type of flexibility. If you have a lot of young kids at home, your best option is not going to be to work in the field because you may have to be away from home. Your flexibility includes being able to be in the Northeast no matter where you live now in the next 24 to 72 hours. Can you do that? You gotta have an extreme amount of flexibility for what positions are available. You wanna take the positions that come to you because a, hand, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. You also wanna be flexible in uh, the locations that you're sent to. Maybe you're sent upstate New York or even worse, inner city New York, where your expenses are gonna be very high. That's one of the reasons why people are saying don't take this deployment because the expenses in the Northeast are very high and the pay rate, which we'll cover in a bit, are just not comparable to the expenses that you'll have. And speaking of which, number two is that you're going to need for this deployment cash. Yes, you're going to need startup cash. You're a business owner when you become a claims adjuster. Unless you work as a staff adjuster where they get lower than the independent and public adjusters, you're going to have to remind yourself that you're a business owner much like a doctor, a real estate agent, or a lawyer. And we make just as much as them, if not more. You'll need startup capital. So whether you have a nice credit card with a the $5,000 limit or you have some savings that you can use or you can 
collect some funds from some family until you get your first payment. You're going to have to have some startup cash. Now, many of you are thinking, oh, you know, I'm gonna find a way to do it without that cash. Good for you, it will take a lot longer. Good for you, it will allow other people to work before you get a chance to work. And good for you if you find a way to do it without any upfront capital. I haven't seen this yet and I've been in this business and I've talked to many people, but if you're the first to do it, make a comment below and share it with the rest of us. Those of you who get help from that individual who comments, make sure you share this video with other people so we can all learn how to do it for free, if it's possible. We want more likes. We have to know if these videos are helpful for you or not. And likes are the only way. Likes and comments and shares are the only way we know what to create more content about. So liking actually helps you more than it helps me because I'm not really concerned about the number of subscribers. I'm just trying to educate. Okay, number three, guess what? It's back or you have to have a bunch of flexibility. You don't know where they're going to send you. You don't know uh, after a deployment if they want to send you back home, if they want to send you to California. Maybe they want to send you to the middle of nowhere. If you want to make a good impression, have a big sense of flexibility. Um, don't be a nagger. There's oftentimes, well, uh, this trainer did this and they said this and I was here and this wasn't right and all right That's good that you can make that uh, Announcement and those proclamations, but it's not good to for uh, being able to stay deployed All right, number four you want to also make sure that you choose the right position auto adjusters work quick and auto claims go by fast Auto deployments are usually the ones that are quickest to be over. However, if you're offered an auto deployment, it is a good chance for you to get your foot in the door. And the bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. And so at times you might have to just say that, hey, you'll take the auto. However, you'll be able to switch if you can show your vast construction knowledge. How do you also get construction knowledge? Well, we will go over that if you guys let me know. All right, I won't go over that today. So to keep the video short, if you're a staff adjust, if there will be no staff positions that come available just because of the deployment, you're going to want to look at working uh, as an independent or a public adjuster for these claims that come in. You're also going to want to decide whether you want to work in the field or work auto. Field adjusters can make more money. However, they also have expenses. However, you also don't get the boss on your shoulder, you know, trying to figure out what you're doing. And I just work better away from management. That's just me. Next up, companies that are hiring. So I'm going to probably, so I'm going to show you from my computer a few companies that I saw that are hiring. Why are people talking about not taking this deployment? Well, it's really a catch 22, especially if you're new, you may not have the opportunity to decide because what did I say? You've got to be flexible, but there are companies hiring. So here's what you're going to type in and look for when you go to Indeed. Number one, you're going to look for a property inspector position. If you don't get a deployment, look for property inspector roles. This will build your experience. You'll learn how to take photos. You'll learn how to assess and identify damage. You'll also learn terminologies about from the claims process and from the insurance industry. So this is going to be great resume building for you. So look for the property inspector role. The other place that you're going to go to is you're going to get this free job roster list that I have with over 200 companies that will hire adjusters for this type of deployment. Many of them will work with adjusters that have no experience at all. Now, is the pay enough? That's a good question. I mean, $725 per claim? What do you mean I couldn't take that? Like, and I'm going to be working maybe three to five claims a day. Well, when you're offered the $725 per claim, 
As an independent adjuster, you're gonna have to split that money. You may only collect 60%, maybe for some companies, 65% of that $725. Meaning that you're only gonna be getting about two thirds, which in dollars is, equates to about 400, and let's say $50 for easy math. The $450 working three claims will be about 12 or 13.50, 13 dollars a day. Well, how much are your expenses? How much um, gas are you gonna be using? In the Northeast, uh, a rent per week on a Airbnb could cost you maybe like two grand. So you really gotta calculate how much you're gonna be spending in gas, food, travel, getting there, the interest on your uh, credit card, and other things that can really not uh, lead to it being a very valuable deployment. Even when you make about $50,000 in three months, a lot of that can be gone by the time you get home. Or you may be able to live on it for a couple of months. When you work as a public adjuster, you're likely to make $700 to $900 per claim and you don't have to split that with anybody. Isn't that nice? I mean, to me, of course, I like it better. And I get to work from home, so I don't necessarily have the same expenses as an independent adjuster. All right, and so now let's answer this question from the comments. Well, let's answer this question submitted by Jonathan Shamika Green. Thank you so much for your question, which says, if you start as a staff adjuster, can you transition into independent adjusting easier? Well, what is the difference between staff adjuster and independent adjusting? Well, for those of you who don't know, staff adjusting means that you are going to be working claims for one employer. You are going to be a employee, such as a W-2 employee. Maybe you earn a salary or you get paid hourly. As an independent adjuster, you have the flexibility to work claims for any carrier and you also will be paid on a either fee or hourly basis. There won't likely be the salary attached to it. When you're a staff adjuster, there'll be benefits for you like health care or time off. When you're an independent adjuster, you get the flexibility of deciding when and where you want to work. Now, when you don't work, you don't get paid versus the staff adjuster who will get those two measly weeks off. And they are measly because most other countries get more than two weeks. Now, the question is, is it easier? Well, nothing is quite so easy in this industry, but it is rather simple to get started. And if you wanted to start as a staff and go to independent adjusting, you'll have a much simpler time to do that because you'll just be quitting your staff position. If you want to go from independent adjusting to staff, you'll have a harder time because you're going to be now applying for jobs. You're going to be um, networking. So it can be a little bit more difficult to get in, but most people who start as an independent adjuster tend to not want to go to the staff. You make great money on the independent side. You have more flexibility on the independent side. You have more freedom and control over your schedule on the independent side. So is it going to be easier to give that up? I know that I tried to go from not working a nine to five to then working a nine to five, being at a desk and sitting there waiting for the time to tick away. It was mentally exasperating and I almost lost it. It was like being in the jailhouse. So I hope that answers your question. And for others who have questions, don't forget to leave a comment. Now, my name is Abahi. If this video has been helpful for you, don't forget to like and subscribe so I know that it's helpful. And if I can help you make money in this very lucrative industry, would you let me?